All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class, I've been going through a series of presentations from the Mozilla Developer Network on learning web development, getting started with the web. And I'm in the section that's right here and I'm about halfway through with the CSS basics. So I'll have three more to do after this. I left off right here talking about boxes. And I mentioned that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, at least try to do this. And that is I'm gonna come in here and uh, let's see, right at the top of my page, I'm gonna come in and do this. So I've got a div in here. In fact, I'm gonna have two divs, I'm gonna have uh, Let's see, 300, yeah, that's fine. This stuff that I've got up here, shouldn't have done it like that. Uh, I'm gonna do it in here. So I'll put back in my style tags. There's my div. So it'll be 300 pixels and it'll have some padding and some margin, that's all fine. So. Div, um, we'll say in here, ID equals, it's going to be a box, so I'll call it box one. There'll be the first one. And here will be my second one. And let's see what it looks like, because I'm not sure what it will look like. There they are. Okay, I've got just two green boxes. Who cares? Well, first of all, let's see if I can put them so they're one after the other. All right, and in order to be able to do that, I believe, oops, I don't want to do that. I believe I'm going to have to put a div within a div. There we go. So we'll come in here and we'll just say div. And then we'll end it. Don't know if that's going to do exactly what I want or not. Let's see. Well, I wanted those to be in here, but that's okay. Um, we're going to say here div class. Uh, we'll say here those those should have been a class, not an ID. So we'll say div here class equals outer. You'll see why in just a minute. This should also say. Uh, I've got here ID equals box. Yeah, that's, I guess, okay. All right. So um, div with a class of outer. All right. And we'll make the width of this six. No, let's make it 800 pixels. And we'll put a border around it. Not this big. We'll just put a five pixel border around it. That'll be black. We won't put any padding and we won't put any margin in there. Good. Okay. Let's see if that got more of the look I wanted to have here. Well, that was interesting anyway. Sure what that did, but we're going to look. All right. So div class equal owner. Try that dot outer. Width will be 800 pixels. Height will be, I don't know, 500 pixels. And it'll have that black border on it. Okay, let's just see if we've got that. So class outer. And these aren't showing now because I took foolishly took that stuff out, but we'll fix that in a minute. All right, that's what I want is this box right here. And I want to put two boxes inside of there. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work now. This to be a little wider, so I'm going to make that a 1,000. 
Okay, then I'll come back. Where was that? In here? No, it was here. There we go. All right. So I don't want this to be div now. I'm not going to put in any padding and I'm not going to put any margin in. We're going to put that in in just a minute. So the width, that should be okay. And I'm going to change this so that this is now going to have a class of inner. So dot inner. Okay, and this will now say class equals inner. I want that for both of these. Okay, now let's look and see if it looks, it looks a little more the way I want it to look here. Okay, well, I think it put them both right inside of one another, which I don't know why I would do that, but it did. You know what? I'm going to do this. This will work just fine. Let's do this. Let's put in two of these. Okay, that's fine. All right. And I should be able to cut down the size of this. Now let's try about 600 by 500. All right. Good. All right. So you see what these two things look like in here. Okay. All right. Well, notice how these are bumped up. They're butted against one another. All right. In fact, I'm going to cut the size of this, these both these way down. Because I really want it to stand out, and I would like you to understand what the hey I'm trying to talk about here. So we'll make the width, we'll make the height just, this was 300, so I'm going to make this 350. Okay. Oh, I don't have a height there, that's why. All right, let's make the width 350. It's getting there. Okay, and the height can go way down as well. So the height on here, let's make this 150. So you can see now exactly what these look like. I can even cut the height down more if I want to. But you're hopefully at least getting the idea here. What I want to show you is I want to show you margin, and I want to show you padding. So let's see. Can I now come in here? We're just going to leave it. it it's working now, so that's fine. Now, what I want to do is I want to say, that in each one of these outer boxes, I want to add some margin. So I'm going to add here margin of 100 pixels. All right, that's just a unit of measure. So what did that do? Well, you see, it didn't do anything, not until I refresh. You see now how the margin is the distance between elements. See that? All right. Now, padding is the distance within these elements. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to come in, and I just put in the margin. You saw that when I took the margin, or before I had the margin in, so let's just take this line here, and let's remove it. So you saw that when we had that line removed, these things butted up against, against one another. All right, but let's change that line that we had in there. So instead of saying 
Mar whoops. Margin, we're going to say padding 100 pixels. And watch how this looks different within each box. See that? So whereas margin is the distance or the difference between elements, padding is the distance within the element itself. So again, and so this is the content. Let's let's put them both in here. So let's put, you know, we'll make it something. Let's see, we got here with 350, with 300. Um, I'm going to put in here just a, a height. So height, and I'm going to put in 125 pixels. Okay. Just to show you how it's going to look a little different, we're going to crunch it there. Okay, so we've got those. All right. Now, what I want to show you one more time is inside of this div, okay, I've got this class inner, right? I'm just going to put in here inner text 2, and in here I'll put in inner text 1, all right? So I put that in. What's it showing us? This is the content. All right. This area that you see here, this area is the padding. This area, well, this area here actually is the border. And the area between the two, and there isn't any right now, is the margin. So let's add some margin in here because I don't think we have any in here anymore. So let's add in margin. I'll put in 75 pixels. So when I refresh, what you see is that's the 75 pixels of margin. That's the, seven, the 100 pixels of padding. That, this right here, I, actually this is the padding that's in here in the element. All right. This is the border. So the the distance that you have, all right, the area that you put in here between elements is the margin. Within the elements is the padding. Hopefully I made that clearer and not harder for you to understand. Let's assume I did. So let's take a look at what they say here. Something you'll notice about all CSS is it's a lot about boxes. So CSS layout, as they mentioned right there, padding is the space around content. Border is the line that's just outside of the padding. Margin is the space outside of the border. So content is surrounded by padding, which is surrounded by the border, which is surrounded by the margin. All right, and there's different ways that you can set this stuff. In other words, you can set it like I just showed you there in what were called pixels, but there's other units, and we're going to get into those in a little bit. All right, changing the page color, I've already shown you the background color. Again, notice they're combining a bunch of different things here. So they're saying the width of the page is 600 pixels. Margin auto, that's kind of neat. That says to try to center things on the screen. Let's take a look at that and see if that does anything. All right. So we'll go back into our, into here, and we'll go into our styles. And in here where we've got this, we're going to put in margin zero auto. All right. And refresh. Now, you might say, oh, it didn't really do much. And with what we've got on the screen right now, there's a chance it didn't do much of anything. All right. But what it tries to do is it tries to center things that are on the screen. This will make things much easier for you to understand once we get into it. So I want to quickly say what this means. Think about a clock. 
and I'm going to literally put up here uh, Google Images, and I'm going to put here Analog Clock. All right, why? Okay, well, I want to, let's see. This one will work. All right, let's see if I can copy that into here. Okay, good. Exactly what I wanted. All right. When, oops, when you work with a clock, when you look at it, you all know how to tell time, whether it's analog or digital. But the reason I'm telling you margin zero auto, and I want to bring that into, into here, is when you set margin or you set padding, you can put in no numbers, one number, two numbers, three numbers, or four numbers. If you put in all four numbers, the first number that you put in is the top like 12 is here. The second number that you put in is the, is the margin or padding you want on the right, like the number three. So top, right. The third number would be the bottom, or what we show as six. And the fourth number would be the nine or left. So if we set margin, we can set margin in different ways. This says, since we only have two numbers, this is I want no margin top and bottom, and I want you to automatically center it left and right. If I were to put in here, for example, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 40 pixels, that would say give me 10 pixels of top margin, 20 pixels of right margin, 30 pixels of bottom margin, and 40 pixels of left margin. Now that's gonna that could very well skew what this looks like, but let's see if it does or it does not. So I put it in there and saved. And I've got a lot of stuff open here, which I'd like to start closing. All right. Will this look different now? It doesn't. You don't see a lot. But it did come in and it changed the way that it looks on these pages. Okay. This is wider than it was before, for example. All right. And all I'm trying to do is demonstrate a few things because, again, we're just in this. We're not very far into this. All right. Positioning and styling. We've looked at that already a little bit. And they do, you know, so that you can you can also add other things like text shadow. Let's look at that. Let's add that text sh shadow rather to our H1 just on the first page. Again, always much easier to put it in and show it to you. All right. I'm going to remove this that we just put in and I'm going to go back to here to our index page, and I'm going to remove these boxes. I'm going to put in that text shadow right here. So that is wrong right now. I'm saying for H1, I want it to have that text shadow. Okay, you're going to see exactly what that looks like in just a moment. All right, and let me get these boxes out of here. All right, so the changes we made should should be affecting this right here on our home page. It should now have a shadowed look on it if this works. So we go back to here. So it'll be on here. And you can hopefully see the shadow look that it has there. Now, to really make it stand out, let's double the size of everything that we just put in. And then, I mean, again, it should look kind of almost goofy, but that's still okay. So let's put this, in fact, we'll put in here 13, 13, 3. All right, after a while, you, you notice when you work with this stuff, there you go. 
Okay. Centering, again, we talked a little bit about the margin zero auto. I don't have a good example, but we will look at it. In fact, let's just grab this image here, and see if we get it centered on the screen. Okay, in fact, I'll, I'll change the width on it too. Maybe that'll help a little. So let's go back in here, we'll put in our image. And I'm also going to change the width on this to, whoops, sorry, the width on this to 50%. If this works, this should now be centered on the page and half as wide as it was previously. There it is. So let's refresh. There it is centered and 50% of the width that it used to have. Okay. All right. And that's it for this one. So what we've got left are JavaScript basics, publishing your websites, and how the web works. The JavaScript one may take a little longer, so I may have to put in the, actually a few more lectures, and that is, oh, I'm over 20. Got to go.